kill the leader of North Korea? Yes. What? The plot surrounding the release of the movie The Interview is taking another twist, with independent theaters from Alabama to Georgia declaring on social media they'll show the comedy starting on Christmas Day. A Texas-based chain called Alamo Drafthouse was one of the first to announce it was taking online reservations. Within two and a half hours, two screenings were already full, and moviegoers began buying tickets at this Virginia branch. I was looking for a bootleg copy at first, but now I don't have to. I'm going to stand up for free speech as well as to stand up for creativity. Sony Entertainment's CEO confirmed the news in a statement saying, We have never given up on releasing the interview and we're excited our movie will be in a number of theaters on Christmas Day. While we hope this is only the first step of the film's release, we are proud to make it available to the public and to have stood up to those who attempted to suppress free speech. The decision comes just days after Sony announced it would not release the movie on Christmas Day, following an online threat of attacks on theaters that would show it. That decision prompted broad criticism that Sony wasn't doing enough to stand up for free speech, criticism that came even from President Obama. Yes, I think they made a mistake. We cannot have a society in which some dictator someplace can start imposing censorship here in the United States. After Obama vowed to respond to what he called North Korea's cyber vandalism of Sony, the country suffered sweeping Internet outages. But a State Department spokeswoman declined to say whether the U.S. was responsible. Ask the North Koreans if their Internet wasn't working. I can't speculate on why that was if it wasn't. Obama is now applauding Sony's decision to show the interview, and the movie's two main stars are too. Seth Rogen tweeted, the people have spoken, freedom has prevailed. And James Franco posted this photo with the caption, victory. Roxana Saberi, Al Jazeera, New York.